Hello my friends, Clara Parks from The Wool Channel, back with another wool short. Today we're going to talk about wool and your garden. And if you think there's no connection, think again. Normally when we think about wool, we think about things like socks or sweaters or even blankets, scarves, tapestries, curtains, carpets, things you might wear into a garden or that have garden-inspired designs or motifs in them, but that's about it. But here's the thing. There are a lot of sheep in the world, more than 1.2 billion, almost 90% of which grow wool every single year. And yet wool represents just 2% of what is used for global textiles, which means there is a lot of wool sitting around looking for a market that is simply not there. There are a lot of farms with wool looking for a market that is simply not there. A lot of them are being forced to make difficult decisions to get more into meat or to get out of sheep and wool altogether because they need to be able to make ends meet. And even among those farms that raise higher value fine wools, there's still a lot of wool that never makes it past the shearing shed. Maybe these fibers are too short or too coarse or too dirty or too matted or stained. After all, that's what comes from living outside year round, right? But that wool is considered waste wool. And sometimes there's so little value in it that a farm will simply pile it up in the field and burn it. Now, if you watch my previous wool short about wool and fire, you'll already know that wool's high nitrogen content helps it be so resistant to combustion. You know what high nitrogen content is also good for? Fertilizing the soil. Unfortunately, our overzealous use of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer over the last several decades has led to polluted surface and groundwater. And this in turn has led to basically a greening or high algae content on the surface of our lakes and rivers and oceans. That has led to a reduction in the amount of dissolved oxygen that is available in the water, which results in massive mortality of aquatic organisms and the creation of so-called dead zones in our marine ecosystems. And meanwhile, to produce synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, you need ammonia. And what is the primary feedstock for producing ammonia? Natural gas. So we're using large quantities of fossil fuels to produce a synthetic nitrogen fertilizer that is helping create one of the greatest threats to our marine ecosystems. I wonder if there's any other source of nitrogen out there Something we already have in abundance right now, something that's annually renewable, something that is urgently in need of a market, something that would reduce our reliance on fossil fuel. Hmm, what could that be? Yes, wool. For several years now, there's been a growing movement around the world to commoditize this waste wool into a valuable soil nutrient. And I'm not just talking about dumping raw fleece on a broccoli bed, although you can do that. No. It's much cooler than that. The technology is evolving fast, but the original process involved taking raw wool, running it through an industrial shredding machine, and then running it through a pelletizer, the same kind of pelletizing machine that we've been using for making wood pellets, plastic pellets, feed pellets, but now we're using it to make these wool pellets. Put them in your soil, in your flower beds, in your veg garden, your pots or your planters, and you have a ready-made slow-release fertilizer with an NPK of 902. This material aerates the soil as it absorbs and releases moisture, which it does so efficiently, it reduces your need to water. And in a warming, drying climate, the less water we need to grow our food, the better. Some studies also show that if you apply it as a mulch on the surface of your soil, the pellets also help deter snails by providing such an absorptive surface, the snails don't want to crawl across it because they'll dry out. So as more people roll out pelletizing equipment in wool growing regions around the world, not just in the US, but Canada, the UK, Poland, Germany, Sweden, we may soon see a day when local farms and gardens and parks will be able to fertilize the their own beds with wool from the same sheep who grazed in that very area. How's that for a closed loop system? Wool pellets are helping reduce our alliance on synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, reduce our alliance on fossil fuels, add nutrients back into the soil, reduce our water use, and help put a much needed income back into the pockets of farmers. So the next time you go to your garden center, ask for wool pellets. They may already have them, but if they don't, you can help plant a seed. And there you have it. This has been another Wool Short. I'm Clara Parks for the Wool Channel. Thank you for watching. Ah!